Hey. Uh, my name's Mike Bernihausen. Maybe you know me. This is Aggressive Mastery. I'm working on some video games. Uh, and I'm going to start a uh, development log or what have you. Just basically doing some of these summaries. Uh, hopefully in 12 minutes is what I'm thinking each day after whatever I've been up to. I'm going to go ahead and do a summary today, the 28th, on what I worked on the last few days as I've started to dig into the dot sample. <clears throat> that said, so what am I working on? That looks all right there. Put this over here. Close that out. So, uh, Unity went ahead and re released their dots, data-oriented technology stack, multiplayer sample project for us to dig into. Uh, and that's about it. That's what you get to know. You can read some small amounts more from uh, the links I guess I'll put in the descriptions. But the big thing is that they, about a year ago, released the first person sample, which was a uh, first attempt at using some of the dot stuff. Uh, which is the job system, entity system, uh, and stuff like that to allow for a more multi-thread or multi-processor utilizing version of their software for multiplayer games. I dug into that for last year and change, waiting for, and, and, and it's awesome. And so now with the new dot sample, I'm going to go ahead and modify the sample to build a game called Roadless, which will be about uh, capitalism's in-game when the planet is finally purchased by somebody at the end uh, and uh, it's, it's sold uh, intergalactically. Now what you're going to do in that world is it's going to be a mix between Escape from Tarkov where you're a looter shooter survivor in a level based uh, sequentially loaded open world and I'm going to try and make a open world based one of those where you uh, are in one server and you get to pick your servers of about 100 or more people seems to be what DOTS should support with how the samples laid out and what I want. <laughs> and uh, by the way, you're up on top of a 50 inch TV. That's why I'm looking up like this. Uh, and I work in 4K, so you're going to see the display set up like that. All right, well, anyway, so how do we do that game? What I want that, with that game is I want this open world looter shooter like Escape from Tarkov is going to eventually be, plus, which is basically Day Z, but with some extra exits and spawn points. Um, and also, I'm a, let's see, I have a two-time national champion with Team War Child for Battle for Vietnam back in 2002-2003 for the U.S. And I'm also once-time world with them as well. And I also uh, worked on Counter-Strike back in 98-97 on Half-Life 1. Made the first Destruction DE map, DE Dam, with Cliff and Gooseman. So I know that, you know, video games are uh, mods. And then also, let's see what else, uh, video game related. Those things... I've been mapping, I've been around, been a bunch of stuff, been through lands, won a bunch of stuff. I've been around for a while. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at this stuff. Let's see, is my head in a bad spot? Probably. Let's put it over here. And I might as well just get rid of it too. Alright, my head will be back later. Uh, let's see how much time, what my time on this too. I'm going to make sure I stick that 12 minute. And I have three, four minutes down. Alright, cool. So let's pull this over. So I downloaded this dot sample, bye bye head, uh, from their website, which, let's just go through my links here. This is the old uh, website for the original FPS sample, which is no longer being updated. I'm Aggressive Mastery in there. Scroll down here. Here's the link to GitHub, where you can actually download the dot sample and details in here. Unlike the FPS sample, there's not a whole bunch of extra things you need to do to make it load correctly. So that's great. It's also much smaller than the FPS sample. FPS sample is like 60 or 30 some gigs. This is like 40 gigs, I think, or 40 megs even. It's so teeny. So go ahead and download that. You're gonna to need to run a specific version of uh, Unity, which is the version I'm on, 2019.3 F3. So make sure you get that specific version and go ahead and just Download the thing as a zip file, unzip it, like I have on my desktop here, or wherever you want to put it. I have many folders. Uh, then open it up in Unity in the right editor. It's going to go ahead and 
bring you into what you're seeing right here, roughly. I've, of course, already done some stuff, which I'm going to cover today. You're going to have scenes. So I'm working down here in the corner. You're going to have all these scenes. I've made my first scene myself, got it into the menu, and this is what I'll show you. It just like how it worked in the FPS sample, which I have a video of you can dig for, um, about how to add stuff into the menu. Now, when you hit play on any of these levels, uh, it will take a good while to compile initially because I guess it's doing a whole bunch of shader compiling. This is also what, what let's just cover firstly what I've discovered on a high level. Here's a map. Oh, <laughs> and this isn't, in, this is my, what I've worked on. So I've gotten map magic in here. And what map magic is, is a terrain editing tool that lets you build, well, this terrain you're seeing is the basic start point. And you can use a visual graph to do that. To get this working, what I had to do is, and he has some details in the form about it, but I had to delete the compatibility manager and then also comment out a few lines in the map maker uh, debugging code to get, which it gives you errors. Just comment the lines out, you don't need the debugging. And then you can get it to run. Also, the terrain will render, but it since dots, this is a dot sample. See how much time do I got? Six minutes. Dot sample meaning that we're also using dots physics. Dots physics runs differently on different colliders than uh, ECS physics. Well, sorry, traditional Unity physics uses traditional colliders, which you're used to. The new dot stuff uses a new terminology for a collider. And I think it's called like a, let me see what it's called here. Let's go look at it. A physics shape. And this is just the collider right here instead of what used to be. All right. Sorry for going around, but this is the type this video is going to be. It's just a brief overview of what I've touched to hopefully give you in 10 minutes a brief idea of where I've been so that you can be a little bit further forward in your exploration of the sample. So, uh, Let's look at something directly here to help you get an idea of what's going on. Actually, can I hit play? Yeah, I might be able to hit play. All of these shapes you're seeing here are basic shapes created, like you're seeing over here, with a mesh render and a mesh, and then a physics shape. This is on a sub-scene. They're now using multiple scenes and layers. A sub-scene that will be loaded for the environmentals, and it's converted, when you build it, into an entity. So initially, it's this game object when you hit play like we just did here, I think what's going on right now, the delay in hitting play mode, is it's going through the map, going through all these game objects and converting them into physics ob or ECS objects, entities. So if you were to hit play and go back and look into this menu, you won't see any of this stuff in this level. It's all going to be supposedly seeing the entity debugger, but I'm not seeing it there yet. Oh, hey, this might work. Or that. <laughs> open set oh, okay I had a sub scene open let's go through the, the menu uh, the level really quick here so mapo magico that's something I put in there that's map magic so let's get that away the scene here so what you're seeing when you open up this is my own level this is one I copied of uh, I think basic arena a so that I would just have my own version of it and I went in and renamed everything let's see here we have three more minutes all right so if you come down here and look at like white box arena A, what you're going to see in there is the actual main scene and then a uh, dot sample requirement right here. This is what uh, is supposedly telling it what type of scene it is. So you, you make one of these, you drag the actual scene into this, this is for compilation, and then you have this new folder here with sub scenes inside of it. And this environment here is where these physics objects are that you're running around on and gameplay here holds the scripts around uh, how to actually play the game like what's going on uh, spawn points damage box stuff like that so what they're doing is split in this sample is they're splitting out their levels into separate scenes based on the compute being done on those scenes is it a visual scene is it a gameplay scene is it environmentals is it settings and then they're, they're starting to basically use the limitation of scene size for game objects and split it out into so that they can have a scene with multiple sub-scenes to manage the memory correct better, which is cool. 
because uh, I think ultimately you can start moving scenes around fit, uh, in their transports and then maybe get uh, modular scene templates in your world design. <clears throat> All right, we got two more minutes here. So I got map magic working. What the environment is, is so you can go ahead and play with it, is traditional game objects, like you're seeing me here, move it around the scene view. These traditional game objects, like we're clicking on one here as a prefab, are created with mesh renderers and regular meshes. And instead of what you would see as a mesh collider, I think it was, it's now a physics shape. That physics shape can conform to whatever mesh is in the mesh renderer. As you can see, somewhere in here it says it's using the mesh uh, renderer for the physics shape. So if I also have him input um, trees in here, which it looks like I deleted. And it will actually go ahead and just use the entire mesh as a physics collider shape when it does the entity conversion, which is super cool. So you should be able to just pull in your existing meshes, existing materials, convert them to HD materials, which I'll show that real, or talk about that real quick. Just as in the FPS sample, all your materials that were standard uh, renderers, uh, what are they called, shaders, standard shaders, you need to convert to a standard shader all of your materials, then you can just come up here to render pipeline and upgrade those selected materials or the entire project materials to HD materials. As long as it's a standard shader, this here will catch that and convert it to the HDRP materials. So then you would have a shader, and this one looks like it has its own, but you can do HDRP lits or what have you. So that's the main problem you're having when you move the dots is that an HDRP is that you want to make sure your, your shaders are updated to HDRP, then you want to make sure your collision is being done with physics shape, then you got to make sure that the only things that are, that are going to be apparently converted into entities are in sub scenes, so you want to have all of your things that you want to be entities put into a sub scene, such as this environmental sub scene. And that will let you, here at the 12 minute mark, get into the dot sample and create your own level but still not be able to necessarily get to it. Now how do you act, and we're going to go one minute over to talk about how to get your own level built into the system, because that's important. Um, you want to make sure you're always saving whatever you do, because it will just crash if you try to build or run it without save, something being saved. That's cool. Um, get your own level in. So you see here I have white box, new mesh test. To get that into the menu, you have to go edit the actual game menu. Um, script, and that's going to be in, is it runtime? Nope, 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 sorry, sorry. I'm getting visual scripting to work in here too. This is horrible. Game, okay, so scripts, game, front end, and then you're going to have your main menu. And you open that main menu script and you'll scroll down to the 60s and you're going to see they're just listed out right here as drop downs. There is a menu in this, so I'll show you that, but I just want to show this here so you can see, go in there, add in, here's my new mesh, and that will let you pick it as a drop down. You can always type it in the console to get to any menu directly, but building, how do you build this stuff? And they talk about this. You actually go in the build settings folder here and these are individual build scripts that you need to click one for the server and one for the client and actually build them out and then it will actually put it uh, two separate folders into the builds folder here uh, windows and client server or executables and so on this one here I see terrains visual no collisions yet alright let's, let's do that uh, server now I'm actually launching this without the editor, so this is actually the sample running directly as a, a executable, and you'll get this, the console pop up. You could use console commands, so help, we'll give you some basic console commands, vars, we'll list out all the other vars, and you can go ahead and start playing around with these. Um, you can hit escape and it will load up a menu. And you can actually create game, and here you can see I have now white mesh new text is in there. So you can select it. I don't know how many of these things work because this is the FPS sample menu that they basically barely have running. 
but it's better than nothing. So I hit create. It went ahead and created a headless server right here. This is trash. This is a uh, server that is trying that connected to the server, a, a server client that is connected to the server uh, it shouldn't exist. So you can just close that. Um, and you can come back up here, go to client, launch the client. It's going to also have just kick you to the, the console. And you could go ahead and bars, help, and you can also just directly client and put in the IP. So you can hit escape, get this join game, and this, this is actually, I think, populated. And now we've actually joined and are on that server right up here, this, uh, this headless one. Additionally, um, you can see in here that the terrain's working out there, but we can't walk on it. Uh, yes. I'll just fall. But there is a script inside there that talks about terrain, so I'm pretty sure they got terrain working. They just don't have it in the sample, so I'm going to figure that out today. One of the things I'll work on today is getting terrain working. Um, and so what we're looking at here, and it, it runs pretty good. It runs really well, but there's an issue with uh, being close here, is that the, the frame drop you're seeing is something to do with the high res layers when you're looking really close to a texture right here. So I'll probably just turn that off, because when you get out away from stuff, it runs well. And I also had like 5,000 trees in here, and it was running really well too. So it's just something with that additional detail when you're really close to a texture. All right, so this ran a little over at six at 17 minutes, uh, just the initial view of uh, what I've poked around with, and you can see kind of here in my builds, started to get it working, got good FPS, imported trees and got them working, I got Matt Magic in there, got the terrain uh, loading finally, actually started playing around with dirt, and here got the terrain visually loaded but not collisions on it yet. Um, and so I'm just going to keep going through these builds, notating what I'm doing, and then do these uh, videos with you, or all, whoever wants to hang out and watch this stuff, which I'm sure are some of my, my peer developers out there, um, hopefully daily, and keep them to 10 to 12 minutes of just basically going through now my build list and saying, hey, what do we work on today? So thanks for joining me, a little fuzzy here, and I'll see you around. Uh, stay frosty.